Hey there crew, welcome back to another Home Media Bliss video. And for today's video, we're gonna be wannabe landscapers. Let's go. All right, crew, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Now, in the early stages of our channel, we put in a very raw video that we did on this particular house. Uh, it was an outdoor audio. It's a very raw video. Uh, it was kind of like me on the camera, just kind of taping it, but uh, you can go back and watch that. But we are back on this very site where on this client, we have installed many things such as audio, Wi-Fi TVs, and many other things. So today we are landscapers, as I said in the beginning of the video. Uh, I got team member Gus over here. We're actually installing cameras on an Arlington Garden post, 39 inch outdoor post on there. So he's gonna be digging in a hole so he can put that post. Now let me show you sh shortly what that looks like. But in the meantime, we're gonna jump you into a few time lapses where you're gonna see me actually digging all this dirt over here. Now it's covered up, but you're gonna see that shortly in the video. So we actually had to dig up all this dirt because the client um, so, uh, thought that he was gonna be mulching the area. So the, the wires was on top. Let me show you what that looks like over here. Okay, Cruz, if you focus right over here, now Justin is gonna point the camera. So if you see, see these lines that are over here behind all these, uh, plantation that's over here. Now the client said that he was actually gonna throw some mulching in here but change his mind. So throughout the time, rain, the dirt has actually washed away and exposed the line. So you're gonna see us digging out all these dirt and we're gonna bury it. In fact, over here where I'm standing, you're gonna see these pavers. I'm gonna personally take them off and then run the wires and then me and Gus are gonna join together to reinstall the pavers because he's got some paving experience from the past and that uh, we're gonna reinstall these pavers. Right now they're reinstalled, they're already done. But on the camera, you're gonna see some time lapses of us reinstalling them back again. In fact, Gus is the one that's gonna do the work. I'm just gonna sit right behind him with a brush and just kind of brush the sand into place. A few more time lapses of me digging the dirt and then uh, kind of hiding the uh, wires back in. And all the wire is outdoor rated, okay? So it's not just standard wire, it's wire that can be buried under the ground. Now let's go over here so I can show you some of the cameras that the guys already installed. So originally when we did this client, when he moved in, uh, we took care of all his Wi-Fi and his music and the TVs. Later on, he called us back, so he wanted some cameras. We started from four cameras, then it evolved to seven cameras, and now it's evolving again to 12 cameras. So we have to change the recorder. We'll show you that shortly downstairs in the rack. And over here, you can see the guys have one camera right over here. We got a camera right on top. And if Justin, you can get a great shot of that next to that camera, you're also gonna see some floodlights that we did for the client. LED floodlights from wrap lighting. And then at night, all this area lights up with some warm LED lighting on here. He loves it. Now, let me show you over here what these cameras also look like. All right, crew, a second ago, I was standing right over there. Now I'm standing on the opposite side of this bush. And then if you're gonna see, we were pointing at this camera, but next to it, we installed another camera. This camera actually has a side view of the garage. At the end of the garage, we have another camera right over here, which points that way so the client can see the cars coming in. Now, Justin, if you follow me over here so we can show. Now over here, crew, when we stand at the far end corner of the garage driveway, we also installed a brand new camera right here on a 39 inch Arlington Garden Post outdoor pole mount. Okay, so it's 39 inches, but I think I wanna get this a little higher. So we ordered the extension kit, which is another 18 inches, and we're gonna come back another day and just kind of raise the uh, cameras a little higher. We are working with the Luma X20 system. These are the A20 model, which is motorized varifocal lens at eight megapixels. However, the client loves this uh, location here, but in fact, we're actually gonna move it where Justin is uh, standing right there, because we failed to take a look at the basketball pole that he's got right over here. It's blocking the way. Get a shot of that, Justin, if you can see that. See, that basketball pole is actually blocking some of the driveway. So we're gonna move this camera where Justin is standing. We're gonna dig it right up, pull the line, rewrite it right over there. It looks like the client put a piece of stone right there for us as a reference. So I think we're gonna go ahead and take this stone out, dig right here, reinstall that uh, Arlington Outdoor Garden post right here and install the uh, Luma X20 uh, A20 camera. Uh, from here, what else are we gonna do? All right, you know what? Let's take a look at the equipment. All right, crew, we are about to take you inside, but before we do that, I wanted to mention that we did not have the luxury of being involved in this build when the house was being constructed. Unfortunately, and fortunately, the client called us after they purchased the house and we came in and rocked and rolled and did all the Wi-Fi audio and video. So 
because the house was finished, so were the walls. And of course, we were not gonna start tearing up all these walls that are on the inside that were nicely painted and, and finished. So what we had to do to get some of these wires on the outside, we had to run the wires on the outside. And one of the ways was penetrating from the outside. So let me show you what some of the wires that we had to do. In fact, let me jump it in here and show you. You're gonna see in a time lapse, Gus and I getting together running some of these lines through the existing stone that's right over here. So all of these lines, we're gonna bury these lines and make them very nice. And uh, you're gonna see that we had to penetrate the house right in the same way with the water. And then this was an indication that this was the basement. Of course, we stayed away from the water and we stayed away from any gas lines. And then in a second, I'm gonna take you inside and you're gonna see this small room that has the rack equipment. All right, so Justin and I, we're gonna take you there. Let's go. Okay, crew, as we're making down our way into the basement, I'm gonna show you the equipment real quick. It's right behind Justin, but let me show you another fun door that's right over here. So if we walk along the smiley faces and open this door, we have the family cinema. When the client bought the house, it already came with the house. We just came in and fine-tuned it. We programmed the projector, speakers were already installed, we fine-tuned the screen. I guess the builder that built this house, he just had this put together, but we came in and we fine-tuned it with a Savant system. So the Savant is the system that controls this system right here. Turns on the projector and all he has right now is Apple TV, but he's got a local connection so he can connect the PlayStation so the kids can play. Uh, let me show you another cool, actually, you know what? Before that, we also installed a lighting control on here so he gets to manage the lights when he's watching the movies. Let me show you another cool room, what we did for him, follow me. Okay, crew, as we leave the cinema, I programmed these lights to turn off the projector and also turn off the cinema. Look at that, the cinema just kind of went down, shut off the projector, shut off the Apple TV, shut off the speakers, and the client can simply close the door. When we walk across the hallway here in the basement, so as we come across that mini hallway from the cinema, we jump ourselves into his gym. In the gym, he asked us to install the TV right over there in the corner so while he works out. In fact, I'm kind of jealous of this gym. I would like to have a gym at home so I can work out myself. Uh, I like these weights. I like this Peloton's in here, but for him we installed two speakers on the top, 10 inch, three ways. And then over here we installed the uh, Samsung and then he's got an Apple TV. So whenever he controls the Apple TV, he hears it through the speakers on top. When he's not listening to TV, well he can switch these speakers into Sonos, control the music with the app. Um, it becomes very loud in here, as you can hear my voice. Now, let's walk across over there and finally show you the equipment. All right, crew, so we're standing on a very tiny, small mechanical room. In fact, it's where most of the plumbing is for the uh, cooling and heating of the house. So all these pipes is the hot water for either taking showers and also uh, doing the uh, radiant heating of the house. And then right behind me, you're gonna see a tiny little small rack that came with the house. It was kind of empty when we got here, so we dressed it up. Okay, so right behind over here, I wanted to show you, if you see these little wires over here, it's work in progress, all right? This room is still being worked on. So these are the lines that you saw that we were penetrating through the stone, that we were coming above the water pipe, which is this guy right here. So if you notice, we just kind of tied them up over here for now. Walls are a little dirty because the plumbers are working in here. This room is still in progress. They're painting it, they're doing some piping. So it's not really done. So, you know, don't blame it on ourselves. So temporarily, we tied up these cables right here as they may decide to do some mill working on this wall right here or put some wood or maybe more piping. And then at that point, we can clean these wires and make them a little bit pretty. We're not really done with this client because this client's always upgrading and that's what we like. We like to always improve the client's house. Let's talk about this rack. All right, crew, so let's give you a small quick tour of what's in the rack right over here. On the very top, we like to put the Arachnus 310 Dual WAN router that's right over here, and that's back feeding our A-Port PoE managed switch, the 310 series, which is basically running uh, Wi-Fi and PoE injecting some of the cameras. Right below it, I have a 16-port slave managed switch for connecting some of the stuff around the house. Right underneath it, we have the new Luma X20 uh, 420, eight terabyte, 16 channel uh, NVR. On top over here in my hand, this is the one that we replaced. You saw that happen on, actually you did not see that happen on camera. That happened off camera. So this is the one that he had before. It was one single space. And then it was the, uh, this is the eight channel. And then because the client was upgrading from eight channels to 13, I'm sorry, 12 channels, then that means we have to upgrade the uh, recorder. So this one came out. Okay, we did him a little trade-in credit. We have a program where we buy back some of the equipment and the client, we apply that credit towards the new equipment. So, riding along over here, we have a DVD player, Apple TV. 
right behind it, there's our Savan small S2 controller for the cinema. And then we have a Yamaha receiver for the surround sound system that's in the uh, cinema. Uh, we have the uh, power subwoofer that is gonna be powering the in-wall sub that's in there. We got a couple of Sonos that is pushing the house. And then we have some power amplifiers which is pushing the speakers outside in the yard. And then of course some uh, watt box power protection that is managing the power on the rack. If I'm gonna turn it around real quick, you're gonna see at least some of the managing of the wire that we installed. We put a little side stri uh, strip bar over here, and then over here it's given an extra outlet so we can connect all the equipment. And then right in here we put in the uh, 16 channel recorder. However, we don't have any cameras connected here first because we connected them into the POE injector. So then we always program them in static IP. So whenever we change the recorder, we don't have to reprogram the cameras all over again. We just pinpoint the MVR to look for those cameras IP. Um, I think we're done here. This is it, really. This is the uh, bread and butter of the whole house. We got the rack, we got the managed switch, we got the Savant, we have Sonos, and then we have the uh, power amplifiers that's pushing the outside amps, uh, outside speakers. And uh, we have a Lutron Caseta that's managing some of the lights. And um, all right, so let's get out of here because we're done in here and let's go back outside and let's take a look at some of those time lapse of us digging the dirt and hiding these wires. So let's go. As we enter the time lapse section of the video crew, you guys are going to see exactly what my dad promised, which is running the wires under those pavers as well as digging them out and hiding them inside of the dirt. As you're watching crew, you will see that we like to use a skinny shovel so that we can quickly dig out the trench in which the cables will lie in and simply just put that same dirt or even mulch right back where it belongs. As you can see, all the dirt that we use with the skinny shovel, we simply just put back, reuse, and everything looks as if it wasn't even touched to begin with. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, crew, how the heck did we put back those pavers? So thankfully, team member Gus has a lot of experience, and I mean years of experience doing yard work, construction, and all of that simply applies to what we see here. As you can see, he hammered them down, we put them back perfectly, and my dad would simply just sweep the remaining dirt. And of course, after all that is done, what's left to do is run the wires inside to where the equipment is going to be. So enjoy the rest of the time lapse and we'll get back to right where we left off. All right, crew, we just got word right now from Gus to check out the camera. So let's take a look at his work. So there it is, crew. So Gus just finished installing that 38 inch, I'm sorry, 39 inch Garden Post, Arlington Outdoor Post with an 828 megapixel Luma X20 camera, turret version by the way. And the reason why this camera is here, the client's got a camera over there. I mean, look at that, uh, Justin, get a shot of that. He's got a camera right over there. That camera has a shot of this gate if somebody goes through there. But the reason he wanted a camera here is because he wanted actually to have a focal view of this area right here he he wanted to see people coming in and out he's got workers coming in like garden people and pool people to take care of his garden uh, landscaping and also the pool so he literally wanted to see them going in and out of the door because of course some of these services people are not home but they perform the services whether you're home or not because it's outside then you get these monthly billing so of course the client wants to make sure that that billing matches the day when the guys were coming in and out. So when they come in, you see this door open, right? The camera gets it, bang, the client gets a notification, all right? Not only gets them seen coming in and out, but then the other camera would get the pool guys walking on the pool equipment, which is over here. Let me show you. So when the workers come through this door, like us, he'll see, the, he'll see them coming in through that camera. And not only that, that camera catches the pool guys working on the pool equipment right over here. So, so you can make other pool equipment right back there. Not only that, it has a view of that basement window so that you can see anybody try to come in and out. And that's the whole purpose of these cameras. Right. Oh, crew, real quick, I know that I'm yambling and yapping a lot, but I really wanted to make sure so you guys could get a peek at this backyard. Very pretty, we got a pool, we got an eating area, an outdoor kitchen. Like I said, in earlier one of our very raw videos in the beginning of the channels, you're gonna see a video of me showing the audio system. Not only that, check it out over here. Let me show you. Oh, 
By the way, I apologize for the noise. We got some gardening guys working next door. All right, but over here, we installed an outdoor Wi-Fi. And you'll see that, that on that video, I did a tour that we have the Wi-Fi out here. Now, this is actually an 810 Arachnus Outdoor Correction. It's not an outdoor uh, antenna. This is actually an indoor antenna. So for those of you that are about to jump into the comments, what are you doing? There's no warranty on that. That's not in for outside. Slow down, okay? We had this antenna, we send it to Sealock. It's a company out in Texas, I believe, if I don't forget, that they take a special compound, they open your equipment and they put this little silicone-based uh, liquid gel on there and they actually make something that is not meant for outside to go outside. So this is actually an indoor antenna but coated with the Sealock uh, compound in there and I turned an indoor antenna to an outside antenna. This antenna has been sitting here three years, guys, and it's still working. How do I know? Well, for those of you that follow on the Snap AV and the Oversea app, it still shows up and it's blasting 2.4 and 5 gig all the way over here, covering this whole backyard in the pool area. Why does the client need this much Wi-Fi? Well, number one, on their phone and their tablets when they're doing outside calls in here, controlling Sonos with the app, and not only that, he's got some little tiny little Wi-Fi cameras that he installed himself but I think those cameras are gonna go away because he loves the system that we installed, all right? So I think we're gonna return one day and install a few more cameras in the back of the house so he can have a back view of the house along with the lighting system that we installed uh, in the back of the house. All right, so I don't know what's next. I don't know. Okay, cool, a little bit of an update. I've just logged in into this camera. We powered it up and I am updating its firmware to its most current version. Now let's go ahead and follow up and see what the guys are doing. They are over here by the front porch. And the idea here is that the client wants an additional camera. So the guys are working on a plan to get a camera right over here. There is a camera right over there already. That camera has a view of people coming in through this walkway right here. So now he wants to be able to see a camera close to the door so he can get an up close shot of people's faces. So I suggested to Justin to put the camera right over here. They're running the line, they already got it. But we're working blind over here because all this is finished. So what we're gonna be doing is, I suggested to take out the light, take that out, and then take a peek inside, so that's already an existing hole. In the meantime, I am actually going to take this little dual shovel and go over there and move that driveway camera. Okay, crew, a little bit of an update. Justin and Gus have finished installing the last camera on this job. That is the 12th camera. Okay, that is right there. The client wanted to see an up close shot of people coming to the door. He already has one camera right there, but that camera is facing right here on this catwalk on the pavers here. But he really wanted to see people right at the front door. He does have a doorbell, eh, but he's not too happy with the video quality of one of these little over the counter doorbells that you can install. So he wanted a little bit, something more pro. So we installed those Luma system, the X20. Now the X20, what's beautiful about that and the reason why this client is so in love with this system among other clients that we have is the notifications. They get face shot notifications and also cars like vehicles. Uh, speaking of vehicles, let's go check up on that camera that I moved from the driveway, follow me. Okay folks, early in the video, you noticed that we had a camera installed right over here overlooking the driveway on the Arlington Garden Post outdoor pole that's right here. On the time lapse, you literally saw me taking it off and put it in a new location. Check that out, it's right over here now. So we just kind of moved it like 15 feet and what that does, now check it out, it's right in here. We will still come back on another day. We may do it off camera and we're gonna put the 18 inch extension, which is gonna make the camera come this high. And what that does gonna do, it's gonna give the client this view of the driveway. So if the Justin turns around, that is the view that the client wants to see. So even though he's got a camera right over here on the left-hand side of the garage and another camera right here on the right-hand side of the garage, he still wanted to see people driving in and out, catch some license plate, and also see people going through that uh, gate towards the backyard. Now, speaking of moving cameras, check this out. Earlier in the video, you noticed Gus was installing another camera right over here on the other side of the house on this gate entry towards the backyard. He had it installed right in here. We installed it, programmed it, the client viewed it. But we were not feeling too good about the location of this camera. And the client kind of like asked us why. Well, if you turn around, Justin, you notice that the camera view was this. 
He wanted to see this gate. He was looking at all this bush and trees lying over here. So then we said, why not just move it right over here? Even though it's already installed in program over there, Gus had a better idea, and Justin as well, to move it right over here at the end of the property. So right here, we had to redig that line, come across the fence right here, dig it all up, and then bury it right here. We did that over here, hence why we're all dirtied up. But if you notice, the camera not gonna come over here. And the reason being, the client wants to see workers coming in and out to do the pool and also do the landscaping. But if Justin, if you come over here this way, okay, and then you turn around, stand like if you were there at the camera, right? Now, this is the view that the client's gonna see. Not only he's gonna see all that front lawn right there, but he sees the side of the house, he sees the porch, he sees the little windows, and not only that, look folks, he sees the door, people going in and out of this gate. And then after they come in through this gate, they still gonna get catched up with that camera over there. Okay, so if you notice, right over here, to my left, Gus is re-terminating that cable. So he's putting the heads on it. He just put that on there. Okay, that's an outdoor Cat 6 cable, okay? And meaning that we can get, we buried it under the line. So the line is buried right over here. We normally go about 10 inches on the ground and then we put the, we put the dirt right on it. Sometimes we, pie, we we'll get a little bit of gravel, some pieces of stone and we'll put it on top of the, of the cable and then bury it on there. And uh, sometimes, actually most of the time, we like to be on the outside of the grass. So then for landscapers, they don't come and punch our lines. Ideally, you want to put it on, on the uh, um, conduit or liquid metal. But, you know, out here, they're not going to punch it. They're not going to do anything. The client's not getting any landscaping like flowers on that side, on this side. This is the end of his property. Okay, I'm sorry if I'm yapping too much. But when the landscapers come and they cut the grass, they're going to cut the grass right here. They're not going to go back there and affect our line. And then our line, it's right underneath the gate right here. And it's crossing right here. In here, we ran like about 12 inch, or was it 16 inch long or 24 inch long of liquid uh, metal tubing, plastic. We buried it under and we just ran the wire right under. So in the winter time, when the landscapers would come and they basically uh, winterproof the, uh, the, uh, the grass, they're not gonna pork our cable and damage it up, okay? So I think Gus is right here working on re-terminating that cable. We're splicing and making it a little longer so this camera can get installed. Wow, was that a lot? <sighs> okay, let's keep on going. All right, crew, check that out. We done installing that camera. We removed it from over there to over here as we promised. Okay, so that's installed, programming online. The, the client can see the view. It's actually pretty good. It is almost seven o'clock, if not past seven o'clock. It's been a long day. It was hot, nasty, but you know what? We had a lot of fun doing this. There's a lot of stuff that we did here all day today that you did not see in camera, such as Justin in the attic running some lines very hot in there. We did suffer one time working in a very hot attic that our phones just died. Anyways, I think that's gonna be a wrap up for this video. Uh, please don't take this as another camera installation as many of the videos that we have for camera installations. We wanted to show landscaping that we were able to handle some of the little digging and hiding some lines. And uh, so why don't you stay tuned for more videos. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you watch this long, we thank you for watching with us. And uh, stay tuned for the next Home Media Bliss video.